The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like it's better, it's better with you. My life, it's better, it's better with you. This is true, it's better, it's better with you. My life, it's better with you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sawbones, a marital what? tour of misguided medicine. <laughs> huh. Well, it's not, though, Justin. Hello, everybody, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your pre- middlest brother. What? Got a little the pregnantest, the pregnantest Did you like pause. That, yeah, that pause sure. was pregnant with triplets. Yeah. I'm your middlest brother, Travis, the effervescent. Oh, Mac- okay. do you, you stop saying your last name and it's like, that's our fucking brand dog. No, like, but like, that's how a flourish works. Like Peter the Great wasn't like, I'm Peter, Peter Smith the Great, the great Smith. Yeah, that wasn't sure. it. Uh, I'm Griffin McRoy, this, the youngest of them. And uh, so glad to, so glad to be here. I just want to say, I just want to take this opportunity. It's from my heart. I just want to apologize to you too. Um, I've been watching a lot of Encanto lately. Yeah, and it makes yeah. me realize how hard it must have been for you guys to grow up in my shadow because I'm kind of like a mix of like both Louisa and Isabel, strong and perfect. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, it's making me realize now how much you guys must have felt like I don't know, like a Bruno, or uh, maybe you know, like uh, even like a Mirabelle, just completely no power. I, I and, felt more like one of the dirty rats that lived in the yeah. walls that yeah. just like nobody gave a shit about. I now. feel like I feel like Kerp. McElroy yeah. is the Bruno, right? Like, because we, well, we don't, talk, yeah, about we don't talk about Kerb. No, Kerb live, no. And Kerb live in the walls. <laughs> Kerb <laughs> live in walls. The walls with yeah. little Griffin the rat. Yeah. yeah. Kerb live in walls. Me. He'll tell you that, but don't was, ask him. Kerb kicked ass. I did like kicking it with him because he was like way more <laughs> loosey goosey. Than the than the rest of y'all, he's yeah. kind of the one of us that's pissed off about cancel culture. You know what I mean? Yeah, like Kerp, yeah. it's but the, we Kerp's that vibe. Kerp gives off. I do. <laughs> he not got really into crypto to. and he keeps calling it crypto. Um, <laughs> and then he moved out and he's he's high on the hog at this point. He has a dinner plate and he like always has it on him. And I'm like, yeah. what's up? And he's like, Bitcoin. And I say no. And then he shows me that he did draw a dollar sign on it. Yeah. And there's. Um, <laughs> and that there is bite marks all over yeah. it um, that he put on that he put in there. That's Kerb. But that's Didn't just we a have joke. That fictional he's brother was there? A Dougie We've had Mac so or? many fictional brothers, which is yeah. so cool. Whenever we post a picture of us with uh, any person who's not us, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, there's Kerb." So um, I've just stopped taking pictures of people who aren't you two. Yeah, yeah it confuses not even my children in, a, in yeah. a big way. Especially if you do a photo of the two of us, of two of us with one of them not in there, but somebody else is there, and they're like, "Man, Travis looks fucking buck wild," and it's like, "That's um, that's not him." That's Travis not doesn't him. look as strong and perfect as he usually does. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. He's not covered in donkeys and flowers like he normally is, right? Because you're a fusion of the. Well, to, just, I'm not saying I'm literally a future in Griffin. I'm, I'm like, I, it's not like I, there was some kind of te- like transporter accident and it combined Louisa and Isabella. I'm saying that um, I represent the strength and perfection of both of them. Yeah. While you guys are struggling to come out from under my beautiful, perfect shadow. Yeah. I have, I have an unrelated announcement. Please. Okay. I have an announcement for all the listeners of this program all of them and the, ha- and the haters and the haters no just listeners i now know uh-huh that dr pepper yeah is making a berries and cream flavor oh i hey. have this information okay i have the information from you and you 
and you and you and you, you and you. <laughs> okay, I got it. Yeah. They're making a, I let that go. That part of myself is in the past. Yeah. Mm. I am moving on to new projects, much like Gordon Lightfoot stopped playing the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald because he didn't want it to overshadow the rest of his great tunes, the rest of Gord's Gold. The right. launch of the Edmund Fitzgerald, which was the yes. prequel he wrote. Uh-huh. Right. And the model of the I've Edmund got Fitzgerald. This <laughs> shit, and it, it will never crash. <laughs> Nothing is ever going wrong with this bitch. Hey, wait. Uh, Gordon? <laughs> Gordon? Gordon? I don't think that's what we would say. Gordon, about I don't it. think that's the lyric. Definitical terminology. <laughs> Gordo didn't make that one up. <laughs> Gordo, I think. <laughs> <laughs> further alienating all our listeners. Uh, but no, like, yep, I got it. You don't have to tweet it, but text Justin, it, or Facebook uh, it, or or signal it, or gab, <laughs> gab Justin, it. You don't have to put it on parlor for me anymore. <laughs> I got it. No more periscopes. It. No, no, no vines. I got it. Vine yeah. two, all of it. I got it. But Justin, it. you can't shut down the pipeline that has served you so well. Like, Sherlock Holmes never went to the Baker Street Irregulars, and he was like, I get it. Somebody's murdered. Guys. Move yeah, on. Thank you. Thank it's you. Just, it's just, I can't, I can't explain to you guys what it feels like. I know we've addressed this topic before, but now when corporations are going to make <laughs> Mondo money off of this, and it's like, thank you, Justin. Thank you for this great corporate gift. It's like, well, it's yeah. not for you. Well, you should have thought well, about that. Yeah, before you accepted all that money from Dr. Pepper to launch the berries and cream sound on TikTok so that they could launch this. It's all been building to this, and now you're biting the hand that feeds you and yeah. and drinks you? Um. Anyway. Uh, oh, you're just not going to address I'm not going to address I don't want to talk about berries and cream anymore. Well, I do other I'll, things. I'll just say this. I think that's that sounds like a kick-ass flavor. Dr. It Pepper. sounds good. It sounds really good. They need I'm, it in a diet, though. I don't – I diet – Dr. Pepper is, is berries and cream jam. zero so would good, be good. ideal. Berries and cream zero. I'd never drink anything else. I get yeah. out of here now, Justin. You said you do other things, and I would like you to list some of them, please. Yeah, yeah. I get. Remember, I used to do the doll thing. People yeah, that was used great. to like that. Used yeah. to. Okay. I got a um, I got a shorty award in two thousand eight for what? For, for a tweet? Twitter. Yeah, I what? was the AP. Uh, Regional uh, AP Award winner for my business writing and mm-hmm. the regional AP Awards. I had a really good Facebook memory about that back from 2008 that you posted on my Facebook wall, a link to your Shorty Award, and you said something like, eat my balls or something <laughs> yeah. like it was. Were we both up for that? I don't think we were both up for it, but I think- An award wanted... for how good a single tweet was? It's so fun when you think about how different things things were, what is that, 14 years ago? that you won a shorty award and you were the type of person that went on your younger brother's <laughs> Facebook wall and posted a link to your shorty award and just said, eat my balls. On Different it. time. Now, I will say though, in 2008, that could have been a reference to the hit meme. About different characters eating, eating my balls. your balls. Yeah, it definitely was that. But still, I don't think that changes the point that the odds were a different time. <laughs> Would you do that now, Justin? Would you win an award for a tweet you wrote and then go on Griffin's <laughs> Facebook page no. and post a link to that I award and write eating my balls? Now. I think you'd probably get like a scarf my ass. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Scar, huff my farts, kind of deal. Yeah, is huff my farts harder edge than the eat my than balls? Eat my balls, no. Because <laughs> the eat my balls seems like much more of a commitment. Like if someone's gonna eat some balls versus they huff their farts, huffing farts could oh, almost be I a passive. It. Sorry, I found it. This was from February twelfth, two thousand nine, and Justin <laughs> posted a link to a CNN article about the Shorty Awards, which uh, <laughs> wow, it's pretty wild. And he just put, and he just wrote and on his younger brother's wall on Facebook for everyone to see. Suck on this. Wow. <laughs> Why suck on this CNN article that doesn't even <laughs> load anymore? About your shorty. What's award? CNN Why hiding? Why did I tell you to suck on that CNN article? I don't know, man. Had I've... you been rooting against me? Like I don't remember this. Were Probably you not. even working for Polygon or Joystick at that point? It's it, it's. I forget the timeline, but I did. I I guess that made me feel small, Justin. I just want to say, there's a part of me 
I, why didn't you post on my wall that I could suck on your shorty award? Was I not on the social media at this point? Was I not? I'm probably not. <sighs> you were too busy in college or something. I listen. In 2009, Justin, I was yeah. 24. Yeah. yeah. You did go back there for a bit. Oh, but yeah. Oh, wait. Had, I did, didn't I? You did. Yeah, you did. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah, I did go back to college for a while. That might have been true. God, good times. Thanks, everybody, for strolling down this memory lane with us. Yeah. That's going to yeah. do it for us this week, folks. Uh, no, no, no. We're ahead of Vice Show. We're going to help people. Here's yeah, one. okay. Uh, I'm going to visit my sister next month, and while I'm there, I use her guest room. Yes. One problem, her sheets suck. Oof. They feel like burlap. Would it be rude to gift her sheets for the guest bed? Or any advice y'all could give? Thanks. That's from Sleepless in San Antonio. Now listen, it is it is uh fine to give a host gift. So you could be like, and I brought my own sheets. Now here's the thing, uh unless your your sister is com- completely obtuse, it will be pretty obvious. Pretty that you're like, yeah, pretty clear. I pretty brought these sheets yeah. for me to sleep on. Go ahead and put them on now, please. So I'll it's, wait. It can't be a preference thing, right? I like I prefer burlap. Like nobody I it it they've got to be sleeping on some silky stuff. And but Yeah, I, just I don't, don't think that, I just don't think they care. Yeah. They're it's a guest bed. It's getting used what? Maybe maybe she, once a month? And maybe. She's probably never used. I mean, it's a very good chance that she doesn't know. See, this is why direct communication is so important. Mm-hmm. You got to go in and just say, "Hey, I I love you as a person. Your guest bed sheets are trash i mean they're trash that's one Um, that's one option another option is you show up day one and you're like ghost costumes and then you have her put on those and so she can feel it all over her body and then when you guys are done playing ghost costumes and scaring people around the neighborhood saying that you're a ghost uh she can be like you know what i just had these on my body when i was pretending to be a ghost earlier and they suck they're terrible. Kevin, it doesn't matter because there will be holes cut in them. The yep. problem has solved itself with a ghost costume. Now, but oh, Justin, yeah. hold on. It depends where the holes are put. Because what, two holes? That's going to stop you from using sheets? Come on, Mr. Um, Moneybags. I didn't realize that two holes was all it took before you stopped using sheets. No, I, my, my child. My also, you're not using cut. fitted sheets for ghost costumes, Justin. You'll look like a sack of testicles. You'll look like Grimace. Okay, yeah, that's, that's it. That's a good point. You look like a bruised up sack of testicles like Grimace. <laughs> and maybe maybe you could help in this. Uh, so you get the sheets uh-huh. and then you throw them in to the washing machine with some shoes. Okay. And fabric softener. And then you just run them. You know yeah. what I mean? You run sure, them. And that sure. shit, maybe that could like soften them up a little bit so it's a little more pleasant for you. I'm just saying that like I, if someone came to me. If, if if one of my brothers, the one that I love the most, hey, guys, came to my house yeah? and said, hey, I'm- hey Guys? Yeah. What? How do, you, how do you think fabric softener works? Uh, I assume it's acid that breaks just, down the bonds. This on, why don't they put it on before? Why do I have to be involved in that? It doesn't yeah. actually soften it, though. It's not magic. I mean, it, it, it does. makes it softer. So, like, why do I have to be involved in that? I thought it just reduced static. No, that's no, the, it makes the dryer. It whoa, are you? Whoa, are you serious? What did you? Okay, when you when you put a sheet in the dryer, what's that for? Well, I I use woolen balls in the dryer, Justin. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> what's that supposed to mean, sir? Nasty dog. Anyway, I'm an adult. Fabric softener works. That's proven. Go ahead, Travis. I'm just saying that if the brother that I love the most, which now might be evident, came to my house and said, "Hey, these sheets on your guest bed suck," and I yeah. brought you other ones to put on there, and I'll put them on myself, I'd be like, "Okay, I don't care. Like yeah, it's my guest stoked. bed. It really has zero impact on me. And in fact, if anything, this is a net gain because you brought the sheets, you put them on. It cost me nothing. You don't. Yeah. You don't even have to." To, you don't even have to say against the sheet. You don't have to say anything bad against the sheets. Hey, Becky, I hate to be a pain, but my doctor said I have paragrabitis uh-huh. and I have to use these prescription sheets. I, I got special sheets that I'm going to leave here. These are special sheets that I'll leave here. I'm leaving them everywhere I could possibly sleep. But because of the paragrabitis, I have I have to use these prescription sheets. There's also a good chance you could just change out the sheets and like secret away the old sheets and your sister would never, never know. know. Never know. If anything, your sister might one day, years from now, approach this to change the sheets on the guest bed and think, are these the sheets I put on the guest bed? 
I don't know. I don't, I don't mindfully put sheets unless, on. Unless, unless your sister's just crazy about these Shrek ass sheets. That oh, are so I love exfoliating my guests. Yeah. Um. Hey, can I approach the wizard? I love. I, I wish love you would. That. Thank uh, you. Cool. I love that. We got a. This one was sent in by so many people, and it's it is how to make a Star Wars movie. Oh um, well. Just, oh huh. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just for w- just for fun. You might like to toy around with making the next big episode in the Star Wars saga using your own home filming gear. I would. It, it won't be as spectacular as Hollywood's special effects, but provided you, assume? You, f- provided you focus on the fun of making a movie and use your creativity, you'll enjoy the experience and learn things in the process. Awesome. It probably won't be the next big episode in the Star Wars saga, so I, you did. I feel like you opened with a pretty huge salvo there of like, do you want to be Borge Lucas? And then you like immediately dipped out of that. But, but I okay. do like that they used, they couched it though by saying it probably won't. They yeah. weren't like, this definitely won't be the next. They're like, hey, listen, I'm a fucking no man. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. But so, I'm, listen, I'm going to be up front. It probably won't. Let's, but I don't know. Listen, we can do this ourselves. This can be a fun little, little game that we play. So step one, think up some characters. You can't do anything until you got a couple main characters. You don't have to flesh it all out now. Just have enough to build a story around. A good guy and a bad guy. Just make sure you have enough to start your plot. Now, so, obviously, we could also, I mean, if it's a next in the series, we could use some of the ones that's already there. This is Chewie's big movie. You know what I mean? Like, oh. that guy hasn't gotten enough to do, right? We start But out, the oh. problem is, if you do that, then you get in trouble with Lucas. And if okay, you, but so, if you come up with new guys, a new good guy, a new bad guy, okay, um, Georgie um, Boy will leave you right alone. Spork? No. Spork Magnificence. The first name has to be normal, right? Okay. Mm. Oh, right, right, right. Like Josh? My, my, Josh is great. Yeah. Josh? G- G- E-O-S-H. Yeah, Josh. right, right. Yeah, oh, that's G-E-O-S-H. Cool. Josh. That's how they spell it on Bova Bean, which is the planet. Yes, yes, I yes. yes. Up with. This one's set Josh on Bean. Dawn Treader. Josh, oh. that's, the, now that's hitting me a little fantasy. Oh, you yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Okay, yeah. what about... Um, it's got to uh, be something fuck. celestial and then a mode of yeah, transport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So gotcha, it could be gotcha, like gotcha. Josh Sun Truck. Josh Sunrunner. Sun, Sun Trucker. Josh Sunrunner is cool. That's yeah, too, it's no, too it's cool. a pretty good way of making a cool name. <laughs> All right, it is, Josh, doesn't it? It kind of works. It's fine. It's John, John, Josh Sunrunner. Well, and then it, we can make, the, if you I, want, we can make the villain like that's John no, no, Sun no. Trucker. They, and they, it's they, very confusing. They're always getting confused everywhere they go. Do, Dr. Lucas made it easy on us for this one because first name is Darth, and then the yeah. second word is just a nasty sounding word. So Josh yeah, yeah, Sunrunner yeah. hates his dad, Darth. It can't be his dad. That's taken. Darth. Darth. Dark. Oh. This is Ooh. the bad guy? Darth yeah. Dark. What's the good guy? Josh Sunrunner. Josh Sunrunner versus okay, this Darth is... Flippins. No, no Darth... it's, it gotta be just city. Darth Sidious Vader. You know what I mean? Like it's gotta be. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Darth Dar- Scab. Darth Shit Scab. Dar 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 Dar. dar. Well, you, it can't be Dar Dar Dar. <laughs> can't be Dar 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 <laughs> well, Dar Dar Dar. <laughs> I see your force is as powerful as mine. Right. Dar, 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 Wait, dar, is this dar, another dar. villain talking to Dar Dar Dar? Two villains fighting to see who gets to be <laughs> Josh villains. Sunrunner's dad. <laughs> Your mo- your mother loves me more. I there you go, no Dad. Yes. Yeah, so this is two. This is like uh, we're combining Star Wars and Daddy's Home at okay. this yes. point. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Darth Dar 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 Dar. No. Dar-dar. No. Versus... no. Please call me Darth Dar Dar for short. <laughs> Darth Dar Dar versus Darth Scabulous or some Scab. Yeah. 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 Scapula. Darth Scapula. Darth Scabula. Darth Hematoma. And then Dar- Darth Scabulove. Scabu- oh, love is a cool one to put in there because it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, dark scabulos. Okay, okay, we can agree that dark scabulov is the cool one, right? Yeah, sure. It's not yeah. dark dardar. We're rooting for okay. We're rooting for dark we scabulov. Well, now don't, dar, 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 don't dar, dar, dar. assume who I'm rooting for, Justin. 
I'm Guys, rooting listen, for the you underdog. Gotta keep, you got to keep the fuel under the fire b- under the writer's room. And that's okay, us right, right now, right. so let's keep it Let's keep it. Who's going. writing this down? Step, right, on, step two, the wiki. Step two, and Can we agree that plot. Marissa Tomei is playing the mom? Can we just establish We're, that I'm now? not casting it right now. I'm just right in this now. room. Oh, my God. Okay, but I can't picture it with... Okay. Also, there's no moms in Star Wars, only aunts. That's okay. <laughs> and we can't make Marissa Tomei another aunt. That is true. You know what that I mean? That is okay, true. Okay, so come up with a plot. Awesome. Start with got the main that. idea, the main conflict of the movie. We got that. These two Darths want to beat Josh's dad. Next, think of some things that could happen along the way. <laughs> okay. Okay. They take him okay. out for a drive in the pod racer. Yeah. No, they take him to a they take him to a pod race. But Darth Skabulov bets on the pod races. Awesome. Oh, and that's good or bad? We don't like that. Oh, we well, don't like that. it's kind of up to the, yeah. It's oh, not and for... through a series of misunderstandings, Darth Dardar is in the race. Oh, that's He shouldn't funny. be. He yeah. shouldn't be. He was looking for the bathroom, and he went in the wrong door, and suddenly he's out there in the pond race. Okay, right? f- focus on a theme of your own. You might want to make it really original, like the Great Sith War or the New Republic. No, that's what? too big. That's too much to like. That's too much lore for me. Yeah, uh, I like this. I mean, I want to establish that this is a quiet time in this galaxy, far, far away. Yeah, right? Sure. Everything's pretty much. I want. I'm not even going to say simmering at this point. This is just like everyone's like. Well, I don't feel like doing anything right now. So the Darths have some free time. For yeah, to fuck around. Okay, so step three. They're not this, fucking around, Griffin. They're looking for love. Right, in all the wrong places. And this next step is going to really be in our wheelhouse because it's the literal next step in this WikiHow article. And it does say, make it funny. Oh, humor, hell yeah. Humor will improve the amateur. Keep your movie. grades up. Um, Keep your grades up. Make it funny. Uh, it'll improve the amateur moving, allowing for much forgiveness for the amateur setting and storyline. Add a few jokes and punchlines to your movie. It wouldn't be a good one without it. Make sure that you understand people's styles and make the humor fit each of them. Here's an example scene they have. Rebel 1 and Rebel 2 are walking. Rebel 1 collapses. Rebel 2 calls for his commanding officer. Rebel 2. Sir, my command, my partner collapsed and is not breathing. What should I do? Commander. Make sure he is dead. Then tell me. Rebel 2 shoots Rebel 1. Rebel 2, now what? Oh, my God. That's a, that's a kill. Wow. That hey, I'm, can I punch now. up that joke? Yeah. Rebel 1 collapses. Rebel 2, uh, I think I think he's dying. Rebel 1, nah, I just, I'm sleepy and I shit my pants. Okay. Funny. Or, that's funny to me, too. You could also have Josh Star Getter. Sun I runner. forgot his name. Star Runner, runner come runner? up and, like, Everybody's like, wow, fucked up. We just saw a murder on the screen. But then Josh Sunrun comes up and takes the laser out of him. And now he's okay again. Oh. oh my God. Do you know what I mean? Because then that way you do get the really funny joke that they come up with, but you don't have to feel guilty about it because you watch someone die. Oh, okay. Because he took the laser out. <laughs> uh huh. So that's cool. And you might be saying, like, that, but that's not an established Star Wars power. And to that, I would say, watch any, watch anything. Watch any Star Wars shit that's come out for the last 10 years, guys. We're just having fun with it at this point. Yeah. Now, yeah. I, oh, this does occur to me, Griffin, because we hadn't established, this is probably knowing Star Wars canon, something we should have decided early on. Yeah, sure. Is Josh uh, a chosen one of some sort? Of uh, course, that's the dumbest thing you've ever said on this show. Yeah, of course he is. Of okay, course he is. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Josh, and also he can turn into a wolf. Uh, part four. Yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> dude. Produces yeah, strip. Dude. Like a force wolf? Uh, yeah, of course it's a force wolf, Travis. That's the second dumbest thing you've Wait, said. Wait, before we move on, what have we established so far? Josh Sunrunner yeah. is the ch- is a nephew. chosen. He is a chosen one. He is a chosen. He is one. a chosen one. He is the nephew of. He's got. There has to be some att- like you got to have something set up so that in episode like the the third or fourth episode of the show, like yeah. fucking Greedo walks in and everyone's like, Ooh! and that's them nutting. Yeah, he's. <laughs> He's Grogu's. He's Grogu's nephew. He's Grogu's. No, 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 no. I don't want to. I don't want tied up with the Mandalorian verse. Like, yeah, it's got to be. Its oh, like, even though Timothy thing. Oliphant is in the the Mandalorian verse, that's great. I don't know why that changes the point. Like, well, he's going to come in at the end and and sweep the mother aunt off he, her feet. Is well, he maybe related to Kit Fisto somehow? Oh that's yeah, possible. or Porkins? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wedge oh, Antilles, perhaps. Yeah, he's the Death Star's grandpa. 
<laughs> anyway, and then the Death Star shows up in the sky, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, baby, I love that big ship." He's half. Well, he's half Jawa. He's half he's Jawa. Half he's half Jawa. Jawa. All right, he's all half right. Jawa. Griffin, you're an architect of the Star Wars universe, specifically. Yeah, with, I got my fingers all over the Jawa pulse. Produce a script. You'll need this for the actors. Oh to follow well, fuck! Up, you know? I didn't know that was part of writing a movie. Yeah, it, it starts to Do get. You know less how fun. fucked up it is that Griffin's here doing this, and he did actually write. Ex- part of the Star Wars extended universe. Yeah, that's that's why I'm so good at this part. Uh, uh, okay, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why then I'm, just break, break off a couple lines, Griffin, that feel inherently Star Wars. You know what like I mean? Like from the script? Yeah, like what something that, because listen, you can't just like, hey, how's it going, man? That's not what someone in Star Wars would say. Sure, sure, so like, sure, what's sure. a Star Wars okay, so way this to? Is ju- this, is ju- this is like episode, this is the pilot, because yeah. I just decided it's on Disney Plus, this series, and it's well, not yeah. a movie. Uh, and Josh Turner is like, I just feel something uh, calling to. And he's got like a British accent, right? So he's like, Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. How, wait, how old is he? He's 31. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel something calling to me from the stars. And if you're, is that is Michael that, Caine? Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> I feel the stars, something in there moving for me. And I can feel the power grow. Is that fucking Greedo? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now wait, is that the sound of Josh nutting over seeing Greedo? No, it's him turning into a wolf. It's he sees Oh green. right. Of course. Yeah. That I happens see. when he nuts. Let's yeah, get yeah. some humor in there. He turns into a wolf when he nuts, like in Teen Wolf. Yeah. And at this point, I think I've decided we shouldn't do the two dads thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm waiting. Which of the darts do you want to get rid of? Um probably Dardadar, because that's not gonna we can't make toys of them. Can it be but an I, unrelated storyline that is happening off screen that people keep waiting for it to intersect? People B-plot. love It doesn't even have to be B. I mean, it could be D. Extras. Remember, Star Wars is full of extras. Gotta find extras. Hey, guys, we're doing this kick-ass movie about, um... Can I see the script? Well, we've got one line written so far. Yeah. <laughs> and, <it's- laughs> and, and we've made some major cuts. <laughs> but listen, we... <laughs> Okay, I know, I know, I get it, the problems with only having one line, but if you're like, be in my movie, and the one line <laughs> kicks ass like that. I feel something calling to me from the stars. Is that, that Greedo? Greedo? Oh, wolf Woo! hell. Yeah. Like, I'm in. I saw, I'm into you this. can sell that shit in the room. You don't have to that. give a script to the extras. They don't have no lines. Way. No way. They just uh, are going to react to Josh turning into a wolf, and that's what we're selling this series on. <laughs> it's first of all, oh my God. <laughs> Beats ass. All right, this is creating the backdrop and effects, okay? Part one, make a set. You'll need at least one set to film against. Yeah. If you live near a city or in one, you could make it in Coruscant. Awesome. Huh. Huh. What are, where do you live? Cleveland. You can make Cleveland look like Coruscant easy. Yeah. Easy. One, Just film one the tops to one. of the buildings. One to one. If you live in the woods, it would be a good idea to make the movie in Kashyyyk. Or indoor. Indoor. Yeah, yes, course, obviously. Obviously. One. You didn't need it. If you that. live in Arizona, in parentheses, desert, you could make it on Tatooine. Awesome. If you're in but the But I want to create a new planet. Uh, mountains can be Hoth. Big field can be Naboo. If you live near a swamp, make it Dagobah. Welcome. Uh, this is my planet, Backyardia. I mean, yes. it looks just like it's someone's backyard. And these are what? the backyardigans. Kip <laughs> chip. I have long been the mayor of Kroger parking lot, but I am thrilled. <laughs> You've made this long journey, Sunrunner. And it looks like they're asking us to leave because we didn't acquire any permits. Well, Let us it, move to a, Mom's basement here. It's a stormtrooper. My name is Carl. Get out of my fucking Kroger's. <laughs> Get out of my Kroger's. Um, Do you want to be in my movie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this of line. course. There's a lot of lines in this article that beat absolute ass. And this is another one. Step three, find suitable music. You can play it on your guitar, but you can make it better by adding the real deal. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. What? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Get some real jizz in there. Get some real space jizz in there would be so cool. But how much cooler would Star Wars have been if it was like, down, 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 squirming away, woo, woo, woo. And people would be like, well, this isn't the real deal music because it's just a guitar, but damn. That's you can good, get, but what if it was more like Oh, that's good. Do you think? Do you think that George went to 
John did John Williams do the Star Wars? He did, right? He did some of it. He did some of it. And then he was like, so he and George was like, so we need a music for this scene in a bar. And then jo- John That's a Williams really good like, George Lucas. Thanks. And John Williams was like, uh, okay, I think it'll be like ba 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 ba. And then George Lucas was like, no, make it stupid. Like <laughs> beep, 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 beep. Make it sound like a child's toy. Make a dumb, like dumb jizz. Uh, what? What'd you call it, George? Did Dumb you mean jizz? to say jazz? Oh, uh, no. I no. meant jizz. <laughs> I wasn't thinking of jizz when I said that. <laughs> I, that's what they call it in space. Wait, George, you're saying that they call music jizz and say, yeah, I'm George Lucas. I got to go work the on Howard only, the Duck. The only thing wilder than the moment that a person learns that George Lucas called the music jizz <laughs> is the music that George, this is the moment that George Lucas learns that semen is called jizz. Yeah. That would be the only thing Wait, wilder that, than. That's it too? Is it too late to, oh, what's that? People will only know about it if I t- talk about it in interviews? Well, I can't stop myself from talking about jizz. <laughs> I got it. When you've got jizz in your heart, you've got to let it out. What's well, a funny story, isn't it? Uh, get some <laughs> actors. Uh, oh. Remember how Harrison Ford flew the Millennium Falcon in circles just to lose the Imperials in that asteroid field in The Empire Strikes Back? Well, Spoilers! Well, to get characters with good personality like Solo, you need actors with equally good personalities. Why did so you Tom have to Holland. tell us? Tom Holland, his brother. Uh, get Tom Holland, get uh, Marissa Tomei. Uh, we're going to get Robert Downey Jr. Yes. Uh, get Zendaya in there. And of course, what what would the film be with old Josh Sunrutter as Willem Dafoe. We gotta yeah, have yeah. him. We need to yeah, get Willem. This uh, is the thing, because not a lot of people- Now, wait, now, stop the show. Griffin just said Josh Sunrutter <laughs> as <is>. Willem <laughs> Yeah. So that's what it is. I think it I can't be the other <laughs> way. I think the sentence I said was, what would the film be with Josh Sunrunner as Willem Dafoe? As if, like, I was pitching that to you Yeah, guys. you're pitching a parody of your own movie that you haven't yeah, made. Yeah, 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 I love this. Uh, we'll the rest this. of this article kind of. I think it might go a little something. Something like this. <laughs> Now, give of- me a job that yeah. Willem Dafoe might not normally have. Right. Uh, I'm hearing this- sex therapist. This, the rest of this uh, article is boring, except for the- there's one last step that says create the DVD. <laughs> Once you're satisfied, send the movie to a menu making program like uh-huh. iDVD or others that work for you. Make a cool menu design, then burn your movie to the disc. This is your prototype. If you're happy with your movie, then burn some more. Sell them on the street or something. Maybe make a trailer. If someone came up to you on the street and was like, hey, do you want to see, do you want to buy for $10 the Star Wars movie I made? The answer to that will never be no. It would, uh, yes. I would actually rather do that than if someone says, like, I have a bootleg copy of a real Star Wars DVD for like 10 bucks versus one I made from scratch. Yeah. Starring Willem Dafoe. Yeah. As himself, as Josh Star's uh, Sunrunner. His last, we just don't, like, I'm changing the movie again because I do feel okay. like I'm taking a sort of, like, directorial role at this point. Uh, does it feel that? It I does. would say more, it feels more like an executive producer to me, but. Yeah, more of an EP. Well, it, so here's what I'm thinking is that. Because you're, you're constantly kind like of fucking up my in. vision. Yeah, sure. So Listen, do, I'm happy just being there to shepherd what I consider now my yeah. baby. Well, uh, yeah, but I've got as the, the writer, my, I got my hands on the scissors. We can co make it, Tra- Trav. We can go. Did you almost call your brother Charlie? We can no tra- Travis Rousseau, yeah, and uh, Justin Rousseau, like the Rousseau brothers. Yeah, okay. and I can be like a powerful movie producer. And there's honestly only I can't think of too many of them, and a lot of them are pretty bad, pretty of bad shit. people. Yeah, yeah. So let me just say that you do Kevin Feige. Uh, well, do let me do say this. No last name for the protagonist. He's just Josh. No, hey, I don't like hey, that. Justin, can Wars. you join me yeah. over here in my trailer? Yeah, I loved. It. Yeah, I'm and willing sure, to yeah. as Josh. I think we got we got to. So I think we got to cut Griffin out. No, wait, we got to give him a different name. <laughs> we got to give who a different name? Griffin. You can't just be Griffin. That's our brother. He's the producer of the movie. Uh, yeah, we got to cut him out. He needs a new character though. So we're gonna give Griffin a character and then cut that character out of the movie. No, <laughs> no, I'm saying in the rich fiction we're developing, Griffin can't just be Griffin. Okay, uh, Josh too. We got to cut Josh too. Okay, yeah, I agree. He's let's go back out of our trailer. Okay. Well, hey, well, do well, you well, want to well. handle it? 
What yeah, did you just drink? I'll take care of it. Griffin, what do you guys think about Pete here? Davidson as a new? <laughs> Fuck, sort wait, of... hold on, Justin, come back over here. That's a really, yeah. it's a really good. It's suggestion. really good. It's really. Hey, let good. me talk to Griffin. Okay. Griffin, hey, and he would Griff. be like a hut, like a like a crazy. Oh wait, hut. Justin, step back over here. I don't like that. I don't think I don't want. I want Pete in the movie, obviously, but not as a hut. That's it. I'm striking out on my own. What? It's a solo project now. No, they already I'm, made I'm solo. I'm producing and directing. This is this is my. Uh, body of evidence. This is my. I'm going to make my own. Then I'm making my own movie. Okay. We'll run them next to each other simultaneously. Hey, uh, we need to take a quick break. And then when we get, uh, we're going to go to the money zone, is what is going to happen. I mean, that's what's happening. It's better. It's better with you. Blah, 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 that might just sound like Babel to you, but I was actually speaking a foreign language, and that's because I learned it on Babel. This is a not, that is not a ringing endorsement for this actual advertiser. Yeah, unless it's you're speaking, actual, are you speaking Atlantean? It's an actual service because I can say is it's so edifying to learn another language. It can make travel more fun. It could just keep the fucking neurons firing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like make you feel like you're making progress in your life, even though. Some other things might have run aground, you know. And if one of your other, if one of your other friends knows the language, you can badmouth a third friend in front of their face, and they'd awesome. never know. That's so fun. Babel's fifteen minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Choose from fourteen different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German, Pig Latin. Plus, just learn Babel's, them all at once. That's what I did. Just learn them all at once. Babel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation. Ooh. An accent. Yes, I studied English there. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. Get out. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code MYBROTHER. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Code MYBROTHER. Babbel, language for life. Hey, Griffin. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like you're... Um, you got a lot on your mind. Mm, no, you got I'm a doing lot great, on your mind? actually. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm having a pretty good day. Okay, because you seem pretty seem stressed, stressed out. Stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. No, Seems guys, like I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing great. Well, why don't you take a moment and just check in with yourself, Griffin? Don't need to. Like... I'm awesome right now, actually. Oh, God. Uh, he's really freaking out. Griffin, have you yeah, considered is, in a maybe doing like calm? To like clear your head and maybe try some like guided daily meditations. You could improve your focus with Calm's curated music tracks or drift huh. off to sleep with Calm's imaginative sleep stories for children and adults. Yeah. Oh, well, let me try it. Boop. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was fucked up. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I was saying that I was actually good, but as it turns out, I was pretty fucked up. I knew it. Wow, and you at home, Colin. too, can find out what Griffin has just found out, which is the the joy of Calm, by going to calm.com slash mybrother. You'll get a limited time offer of 40% off a Calm premium subscription, which includes hundreds of hours of programming and new content is added every week. There's over 100 million people using Calm around the world. So go check it out, calm.com slash mybrother. And for listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special Limited time promotion of 40% off of a Calm premium subscription at calm.com slash my brother. So go to C A L M dot com slash my brother for 40% off unlimited access to Calm's entire library. That's calm.com slash my brother. Um, hi, I'm looking for a movie. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, there's that new foreign film with the time travel. There's an amazing documentary about queer history on streaming. Have I told you about this classic where giant robots fight? Or there's that one that most critics hated, but I thought was actually pretty good. Ooh, I know. The one with the huge car chase, and then there's that scene where- The, the car, car jumps, jumps over, over the submarine. submarine. Wow, who are you eclectic movie experts? Well, I'm Ify Wadiwe. I'm Drea Clark. And I'm Alonzo Duraldi. And together, we host the movie podcast, Maximum film new episodes every week on maximumfun.org and you actually just walked into our recording booth oh weird sorry i thought this was a video store you seem like a lady with a lot of problems well manolo 
We have a show to promote. It's called Backdoor Game Show. It's a family-friendly podcast where listeners submit games and we play them with callers from around the world. No, oh, sounds good. New episodes uh, happen every other Wednesday on MaximumFun.org. It's a it's a fast and loose oasis of absurd innocence and naivete. And Are you writing a poem? No, I'm just saying things from my memory. And uh, it's a nice break from reality. <laughs> Is that Are we allowed to say that? I don't know. It sounds bad. It comes with a 100% happiness guarantee. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> Come for the games and stay for the chaos. I have to do my laundry at a laundromat, and I often find that people will leave their clothes in the dryer long after they're finished, and I need mm-hmm. that dryer. You don't mind well, where this is going. You're going to throw away their clothes. You're going to throw away their clothes in the garbage. I don't want to just pull their laundry out and put mine in. That seems rude. And the laundry will get wrinkly. So I fold the clothes and put them on top of the dryer. I know that's weird, but is it too weird? No one has caught me yet. <laughs> well, that's not a good follow it's up for the a, question. Yeah, is no it one has too caught weird? me yet. I have no idea what I would say if someone caught me. Um, I just don't want their clothes to get wrinkly, but I also need to use the dryer and I don't want to wait. Do I need to stop doing this? That's from huh. secretly folding laundry in San Antonio. I don't know. I'm fucking stumped, man. I got nothing. I don't know what weird is anymore. I've yeah, lost all I've, kind I've, of like perspective. Yeah. Um oh, you know who could help? Uh uh let me call Chris Gethard real quick cuz he actually oh, uh, yeah. he's not going to take your call. No, no, well, let me see. Me? Hold on. He's, he's so whoosh. busy. I'm dialing. Beep what? boop beep boop beep 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 boop boop beep beep boop beep boop. Oh. Beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep, boop. Wow. Sometimes it feels like you just dial with your heart. That was just me making noises with my mouth. Okay, now I actually call him. Now I got him on speed dial. That's not what speed dial means. (laughs) It also has way too many numbers. Where is he? Hello, I can't hear him. I'm really fucking busy. Who is this? Oh, Oh, I told you. Sorry, Chris. Chris, uh, get their uh, welcome to um, our phone call. (laughs) We're having together oh, a real please. phone call. Thank you for calling. But do you know how ma- do you know how much it cost me to get the custom number when you wish upon a star? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was <laughs> that was supposed to be Baba Black Sheep. Boy, is oh, my face it? red. I think wow. we may we may have just doxed you, Chris Gethard, for our more musically inclined listeners. Yeah, it's like a vanity plate, but phone number. Right. Once oh I got on, once I was on TV for the first time, I I demanded the phone company give me when you wish upon a star as my phone number. Yeah, yeah, and they did it because you're one of the Hollywood elite. That's <laughs> oh, right. oh, big time! I'm known for it. Yeah, that it's synonymous at this point. When someone's like you know, like a famous person, like a like a Chris Gethard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and then someone says who, and they go, he was on The Office after Steve Carell left. He played yeah. Dr. Gary LaMarche on NBC's Blind Spot. <laughs> Show some respect. <laughs> uh, Blind Spot isn't Blacklist. No. That's a, no. Thank you, Justin. That's really, that's a helpful mnemonic device I use to keep Blind Spot and Blacklist <laughs> separate in my mind. Yeah. My mother-in-law for every Sunday when we come over for dinner for uh, literally 18 months in a row would say, have you guys started watching The Blacklist yet? I'm thinking it, about it, man. It's worth it just for James Spader. It, every time the pitch yeah. is the same. Uh, yeah. Hey, Chris, we had a laundromat question come up. Um, uh-huh. uh, you d- had no way of um, hearing it. So I just wanted to sort of recap for you. Basically, someone wants to use the dryer at the laundromat, but there's clothes in it. And they take them out and fold them. And they want to know if that's okay. And I just want to get like your take on it. Sort of a, you know. You're a real clothes horse. And we know that like you're, you're big into fashion and you wear Supreme stuff all the time. And so we just figured, you know, your way around a laundromat. Well, I actually have pretty strong opinions on this. Okay. All right. Cause I lived, I lived in Queens, New York for many years in a building that had shared laundry and way too few machines for way too many residents. Mm. Yeah. And uh, you are absolutely allowed. Well, there's like a certain step of social social graces you have to go through. There's steps you have to take. You have to go in. You have to realize that the dryer is sitting there full of laundry. You have to get mm-hmm. kind of huffy about it. You have yeah, to look yeah. around. 
Uh, you have to open the door of the dryer. Then you have to look around again to see if anybody's coming. Shut the door. Then you have to quietly simmer that someone has put you in this position. Wait, wait, wait. Opening the door and shutting the door. Is that like a trap, a distraction? What's the purpose What's of that? Is it performative? Is it to draw attention? It's, you open it because you realize you're being put in the bad position of having to touch someone else's clothes. And oh, then okay. You so you check it out. I'm going to give them 10 more seconds to get down here and handle this. And then you mm. open it again. But you give it that cursory open. Like, I cannot believe another human being did not set a timer or pay attention to their timer on their mm -hmm. phone or whatever. They are putting you in a bad position. And at, at that point, if they haven't arrived, you are allowed to toss all of their clothes into one of those rolly racks and leave their clothes there. And I've been on both now, ends of this. I've tossed my fair share of clothes into rolly racks. And I'm not, I'm not proud to say... On one or two occasions, I've I've come down to a laundry room and found my clothes in a dryer, and I deserved it. I deserved yeah. that, and I know that I put that person through some mental duress, but never fold another person's clothes. There it's, you go. Thank you. That's, that's serial. Yeah. That's well, I would rather <laughs> walk up to someone at a nice steak restaurant and then reach down and pick up the steak off their plate and then set it back down, then interface yeah. with their clothes on such a deep and intimate level. Required that's the word, to right? fucking yeah. Marie Kondo that shit uh, on on such a large scale. That's that makes me want to be sick. And listen, you could say, listen, one could make the argument that at that moment it's the cleanest the clothes could be, and then you're sullying them mm. with you. If I came in. And also, I like my shirts folded a particular. Yeah, way. they're gonna fold it wrong. That's what like, I was gonna say. They're gonna, gonna fold, fold it wrong, it not wrong. the way the special way you like to do mm -hmm. it. And also, you're gonna find out I left like a paper towel in my pocket, and now there's scraps everywhere. And you're gonna know that I lazily threw my jeans in there or whatever. I get it. You're gonna come across like a sweater that should have been laid flat to dry that I clearly didn't give two shits about. Yeah, and you're gonna judge me. That's my secret shame. You're not supposed to know about that. If I came upon a pile of my own clothes that had been folded by a nameless, faceless stranger, I would have to throw those clothes away and I'd have to move <laughs> out of that building if it was oh, yeah. a building. Because someone would have that on me forever. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just such an invasion. I mean, for starters... What if your silky drawers are in there? You yeah, know? Exactly. What if your silky, sexy drawers are or in there? Or worse, your lazy day drawers. Your lazy oh. day drawers. Like, you don't want someone pawed all over your unmentionables. That's a no. huge uh, problem. And then, uh, you know, also, what if they do something weird, like fold your underwear? Yeah. Like, you don't, like, I would never fold my underwear in any scenario in my life ever. Do you um, roll it. Just no, you wad roll. it up. You wad it up and jam it in. There's no. Oh, I'm no, no. I'm a finite person <laughs> right. with a finite life. Like I'm not gonna fold my underwear. No one will ever see it. Like you jam it in. Yeah. Now, Chris, it, anything else do is you a waste. Just jam it in, or do you wad it up and jam it in? You wad it up and jam it in. <laughs> you I could say it. just jam it in. Save yourself a step. Now, Chris, when you lived in New York and you had this issue, did you did you uh, did you never just like go out to your window and put all the clothes on the clothesline that ran between your building and the building across from you? Watch the kids play like, stick ball on the street below. And you hear below. kitty cats having fights in trash cans and somebody yelling about a yeah. pizza or something. While the gangs of New York did battle down on the street. Yeah. And the ice the butcher. Man, that guy selling, yeah. who'd shaved down some ice off the big block of ice was clanging his old bell. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Guy. As they collected dead from the plague. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Every once in a while, I'd do that sure yeah sure. okay because it seems <laughs> bad, like i would take advantage of that if i like i don't want downy fresh clothes i want the smell of the city on me like at oh, all yeah. times mm -hmm. and then uh, some detective sidekick a little put upon boy in a newsboy cap he'd yell <laughs> up at me hey mister don't hang those clothes there this is a this is an active investigation mister <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> and you'd say, like, I saw something, but I ain't talking. Yeah. And then they would come put the screws to you, I imagine. And also, it's good because when you put your clothes on on that clothesline, if someone falls out of a building, they can land in your unmentionables. And that's going to help break the fall and be comical. <laughs> yeah. I have another problem. On top of the dryer is the dirtiest place in my house. It's fil it's oh, covered yeah. in lint. Yeah. That's disgusting. Now you just inlinted their their garments. This, this horrific. That's the punishment, though. I would say to Chris's point from earlier, if they wanted to in, uh, avoid the enlightening, then they should have been down there <laughs> before 
the timer ran out. Not after. Like, if it's going to take, like, 48 minutes or whatever, you set your timer for 43 minutes to give yourself time to get down there and be poised and ready to mm-hmm. remove your clothes as, the, like, your hand should be on the handle when the buzzer goes. Chris, I have a judgment call for you because you have more experience in this. Uh, uh, less weird folding someone else's clothes or taking their clothes and putting them back in the washer. And when they come down, just like, you must begin again. Like you, <laughs> It oh, needed that's... more. <laughs> the cycle starts anew. Putting them back in the washer is <laughs> such a fuck you. <laughs> such a fuck you. I, I looked at them. They were still dirty. <laughs> Had to go one more again. What if you pulled them out and then you piece by piece hid them separately <laughs> around the rim and left a note like, yes, your clothes are clean and dry, but it's up to you to find them. You have all the clues. That would drive a person truly insane. If a person came down to the laundry room in their building and was like, I am positive I switched these from the washer to the dryer. Why are they back in the washer? That's like an Edgar Allan Poe level <laughs> yeah. Yeah. psychological <laughs> torture. Yeah. <laughs> we need a third device. We need a third appliance in the in the clothes yeah. cleaning process where you wash and then you dry and then we need like a proving drawer where where extra clothes can be stored so that someone else can get down on the on the well, washer. Well, if we're trying to avoid, maybe you just put it in and it just bounces them around for a while, right? It's not really doing anything except they can't settle into wrinkles. Yeah, right. It's just keeping them vibrating. That's See, good. A vibrator. We could just call it a vibrator. Let's just call it a vibrator. That's I cool. feel like wrinkles is a burden. If you if you let it go longer than the dryer and you are not there to get your own dryer stuff out promptly, I mean, ideally before the buzzer goes off, certainly within three to five minutes after it goes off, if it goes past that window, wrinkles are your burden to bear. That's your penance to pay. And you know that. And that's part of the social contract of living in a city where you Mm. use shared laundry rooms. Um, I, if I was on an elevator in a building unsure if one of the other people in there had at some point folded my clothes for me. Uh Uh Uh-huh, yeah. I would have to be dead. I would have to find a way to turn off my heart and my brain because I would would never be able to look anyone in the eye again. Wrinkly clothes are an accepted... Everyone knows that when you live in a society, there's certain actions that have consequences and not getting to the dryer promptly means you might have wrinkly clothes. I'd much prefer wrinkly clothes on my own terms than folded clothes on someone else's. And I'll die on that hill. Also, that way, when you're walking around the building wearing wrinkly clothes, or if you spot someone else doing it, you're like, that's them. I know, that's the person who leaves the laundry in there. Now, Chris, let me me ask you this, because I'm dying to know. Would it be better or worse if the question asker had printed up some business cards with their face, with a picture of them, and their name on it, and like their apartment number that said like, Listen, I don't want you to worry about this. I did it. I folded your clothes. Mm. And this is my schedule should you choose to avoid me for the rest of yeah. our lives. Or like or it says on there like, "Hey, I I'm trying to get into business for myself. Only the first one's free though. So if you would Ooh. like this kind of attention to detail in a few our white glove service in in folding laundry. Uh If you came down and they were tied up in some like like parchment paper, with like a oh, twine bow around oh, them. Nice. Yeah. Fuck. Like on a cruise ship when you get them and they all got the little tags and they're in a basket. Oh. I feel like that's going to turn this from like weird to, ooh, la, la, I've got like a fairy godmother. Yeah. Oh, Chris, what's the, what else you got going on? What's going on with you, bud? You want to just stick around and rap for a just while? Just what's I would going love on, it. bud? Yeah, what's going on? What's going on with me? Uh, I'm a dad now. I got a beard now. Everything's Whoa. changed. Whoa. Oh, shit. Did they happen simultaneously? Happen. I mean, they all tie into a midlife crisis. That's very clear. The <laughs> child yeah. triggered a larger midlife crisis that has now reflected itself in facial hair. Yeah. That's why you called your baby Corvette. I get uh-huh. it now. Uh-huh. I didn't I actually got a Vespa with the first baby, and then I was like, that was fucked up. And then with the second baby, I like reflexively got another Vespa. Yeah. So Yeah, that was weird. Now, I'll tell you, uh, Chris, when my first was born, I, I had a very long beard right up until she was about nine months old, at which point she was able to make full-blown fists and attempt to remove my beard from my face, at which point I shorn it down to quite a short level. Um, so just, I, I'm not quite certain how old your baby is, but you've got that to look forward to. He's about to be three, and I, oh. I cannot grow enough facial hair to have him uh, he he already 
punches me, kicks me, yeah. yells in my face. He's at that age already where uh-huh. he, he, I'll tell you the exact window he's in because I've heard that most kids go through this is he can pee in the potty, no problem, but he gets really nice. embarrassed about pooping. So he poops in the diaper. And then when you go to change the diaper, he's humiliated and shamed and reacts with rage and violence. Mm. That's the yeah. exact window. That's how I feel when I poop too. Just like still. It's gross. It's, it sucks that we it's have to so do that. It's so weird. And, and our parents told me I was the only one who did it. Um, That's fucked up that they said that to you, Trap. Yeah, I know. It's really weird. Hey, you got you got a new uh, uh, essay coming out from from Scribd. Oh Originals. yeah, I'm promoting. I, I, just, I wrote a thing called Dad on Pills. It's on a service called Scribd. Um, it's like it's not quite book length, but it's up there. You can get an audio book or ebook, and it's all about. I, I wonder, you know, I think a lot of people of our generation, it's like we're the first people who started openly saying, like, hey, I take. Depakote. I take Xanax. I have anxiety. I have depression. We're all going to talk about these things. But I wrote a thing that's all been all about how I'm reconciling that with being a dad. Because a dad, mm. like, you're supposed to be a role model. Mm. Mole model? Mole model. Mole model. <laughs> supposed to be a mole. That shows you're supposed you what to be a, a mole rocker. My father was a, a, a fantastic orator and a fine mole model well, for me it, it, it's growing like, up. I've spent my whole adult life feeling sort of like broken and not like yeah. a god. Like, no, I don't feel like a man by the traditional mm. standards. So how do, and now I have a son? That's ridiculous. So um, I, it's all about that. And it's pretty funny and I like it. And it's raw and it's real. Can I ask you a question, Chris, that I was struggling with last night? Sure. And this is a little more serious, but we have raised a lot of guests. Hey, it's let's not bring heavy. It down. It's just bring like it down. a little more thoughtful. Um, the uh, my kids are, you know, like talking and but not communicating. Just like you know how kids are just sometimes like, I just gotta make some noise. Oh yeah. And they were both doing it, and I was really getting stressed out because I get too much like noise, people talking, and then you're feeding the kids, and it gets like. Just because of the way my brain's all put together, I got like unduly frustrated and like really in my head about it. And I really struggled with, should I like, should I tell my kids that like, it's hard for me when this is happening? Like, I, I it was a real struggle. Like, I didn't know really how to handle it. Like, I, I felt weird telling them that they had to modify my behavior because of my, you know, mental illness. And like... I feel like as a parent, sometimes I have this urge that I should just like keep trucking and keep on pushing through no matter, no matter what, but it did feel like admitting a, a frailty to them. And I, and I, I don't know. I just want to get your thoughts on that sort of well, that's exactly broader what, idea. That's the, this thing that I wrote, it's exactly about all those questions like that. And, and, I'm with Oh, so you're saying you I got to get the guy. Got to get, get his plug, nut plug, milk plug, away. I get, get it. Nut. Plug, plug, plug. Uh, no, but I'm with you and it's exactly – because I sit there and I have all those instincts too of like I better put the poker face on and I better make them think everything's okay and I got to be strong for my son. And my dad did all those things for me and he's a great dad. But then I also think about how many years I've unwrapped so much of those exact things in therapy and – how mm. that mentality of feeling like you need to be tough in the face of stuff and how you shouldn't show emotion, like how much that built to boiling points for me. And I go, oh, this is all stuff that instinctively I'm feeling like I have to do because that's the only example I know. Maybe some of it's example, some of it's biological, I don't know. But it didn't work out well for me, all those traditional like – I wish that maybe – at uh, you know, I, I'm not the only person of my age who probably wishes my dad could have been a little more emotional. You know, who could have let his guard down at times, and maybe that would have let me let my guard down. And I sit here and I'm like, man, I am a mess. Like, mm. I'm a I'm an actual mess. I had an incident. We moved to our house in Jersey, and I I write about this in the thing that I'm plugging. But I I started to have, um like an attack. Like I've had these panic attacks, these anxiety attacks over the years. And I realized I hadn't looked up the mental hospital closest to me at my new house. So I looked it up just in case I had to go. And it was one that we used to, when we were growing up in Jersey, one big thing that people like to do for fun is they go and they break into abandoned mental hospitals. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's really fun. And I was like, oh, 
it's Greystone Hospital. I've broken into the abandoned parts of that. Am I really going to go? Be, is that the full circle moment of my life? Like when I was 16, I used to break into this mental hospital for fun. And now I'm going to go be a patient there. And like, I'm in my yard holding it's my the son. the circle with, of life. Like, That's the real circle of life. And I'm like Googling that with my phone in one hand while holding my son in the other and crying. And I'm just like, oh, I am. Am I, I, I am bad at being a dad in the traditional sense. So how do I, how do I do this? And when I went to look for advice on it, there wasn't much out there. So I just wrote a thing that is funny. I, I'm not qualified to give advice, but it's like a funny look at stuff like it's this. That us. Maybe you, yeah, we, we've been doing it for long. 13 years. There you yeah. go. Yeah. You build up, right. You just start getting honest. You just got to start getting honest. So. You could also do, Justin, you could just do what I do, What's which that? is I, I'm very open about my emotions and my mental health with my kids. Oh, but then I me, also, I, I also tell them stories about different wild animals that I've been in fist fight with and like how much Keep I've guessing. embarrassed those yeah. animals and be like, yeah, there's one time three bears came in and I whooped their ass. I do that too. Like, I'm like, yeah, I know I'm crying about this McDonald's commercial I saw. And I don't yeah. seem to be very okay, but I built that table you're eating on, kid. Yeah, right, right, right. Oh, hands. yeah. I just watched 30 seconds of uh, Homeward Bound, and yeah, now I'm sobbing. Yeah. But also, watching me pick up this heavy chair. Yeah. I can't listen to Sola Salou from Susicle. So what, kid? Get off my case. Watch I got to punch this drywall. 50 cigars. <laughs> hey, you're going, you're going on uh, on the road again. Yeah. How you? That's got to feel. Got to be exciting. Oh, it's the best. I, I had started going on the road last year, and then the Omicron shut it down. Oh yeah! Pushed oh yeah, back baby! Like five months. Yeah, baby! Yep, 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 but yep. I got it all scheduled starting in May. People can go to chrisgeth.com, and I got—I mean, dates all over the country: of Florida and uh, California and Portland and Seattle. And guess where else? West Virginia. That's right. Come to Morgantown. Time. I'll be there for the first time. Have you never been to West Virginia or never performed? I've driven through West Virginia. And I, in my past life, I used to work at a book series all about like haunted places and conspiracy theories and stuff. So I, I've driven uh, around West Virginia in I relation to the Trans Allegheny uh, Asylum there. There's a huge uh, uh, a, a abandoned mental hospital that they turned into a haunted house. Tasteful. Love um, love yeah, it. love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's, that's easy. Yeah, we did. When we uh, we had our all our tours planned out for 2020, and we I can remember very clearly having this discussion of like, well, we had to cancel the March shows, but I bet this will be all set by April. Yep, <laughs> and I was right, but I it turned out to be April 2022. Yeah. Oh, so you guys got your your tour dates back up? Oh so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good. And it's I I wanted to like name the tour something like. You know the God willing and the creek don't rise tour, or yeah. the like. Temp this the, time for sure, yeah. The pending to the hubris of man tour. <laughs> um, that that's at chrisgeth.com. Scribd is where you can find uh, uh, Chris's new, not a book. I know it's like a novella, it's in, but it's like, like a, a novella. It's a novella. It's called Dad on Pills. You'll like Dad it. on Pills, and. Uh, well, Chris, I appreciate you being here, but thank oh, you. Oh, thanks for having me. And we didn't even talk any smack about J.D. Amato, which we could have done. Oh, we will. Oh, that oh, fucking clown. Jo that Join us for the for, for the uh, MBMBAM after show. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thank you. That was so fun. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Chris. No, that was for Chris. Oh. That wasn't for you. Damn it. Don't try How to steal you? one of Justin's precious thankses. Well, I was just so excited. You know, like on uh, Great British Bake Off when uh, Paul Hollywood goes in for the handshake and another contestant will swoop in and right, take the yeah. handshake. And yeah, then and he Paul's says, you like, can't damn it. Back. Yeah, I well, touched you. Sorry, I was going to shake your hand, but then Tom Rick came over and took it. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Rick is the name of every contestant on the yeah. show. Anyway, thank you, Chris Gethard, and thank you to you for listening. And I guess thank you to Travis. Yes. For being, to yes. Yourself. I don't need yes! to thanks. I Fucking need it. got it. <laughs> Travis, do the promotions. You're good at Oh, this. right, right, right. Uh, so we're really excited. Uh, we're going back on the road. 20 Rendezvous Fancy Takes Flight Tour. Tickets are on sale now. We have stops in Washington, D.C., Detroit, Michigan, Cincinnati, Ohio, St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, Minneapolis, Minnesota, you Boston, Massachusetts. You don't have to say the states. Oh, Ma Mashantucket, Salt Lake City, Portland. San Diego and a like, version nobody's gonna be like, Tuck Ariel. People aren't gonna be like, oh, you mean San Diego, North Carolina? You know? Well, I know, but I was trying to get I was trying to pump it up, you know, because sometimes people sure. just like hearing the name of their state, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. That's how I feel when I hear Ohio. Um, so virtual Taz in May. We've got all kinds of stuff going on. You can find out uh, all the links and all the info at bit.ly slash McElroy Tours uh, and mask and proof of full vaccination or negative COVID tests within 72 hours of the event start are required. You can find out all the info. Once again, all the ticket links at bit.ly slash McElroy Tours. We're so excited to see you and come to a town hopefully near you. I mean, we're doing as many as we can. We're trying to catch up here. Uh, and thank you to everybody, speaking of virtual MBMBAM, uh, thank you to everybody who joined us for the virtual show on Saturday. That hasn't happened yet. No, but it will once people listen to this. We haven't done it yet. But people, How do you know if anybody joined? Maybe nobody joined. Well, at least Dad will be there. Video on demand exactly. is still available for $10. Uh, you can still watch that now at bit.ly slash MBMBAM virtual. Maybe you'll be the first. Maybe you'll be the well, first. Well, I to see doubt it. they'll be. MBMBAM virtual. Trav, you got to do the URL. I know. Bit.ly <laughs> slash MBMBAM virtual. There's no way they'll be the, the first. Dad wrote a, a children's book called Goldie's Guide to Grandchilding. Uh, it comes out on March 29th. You can pre order now at linktr.ee. That's L I N K T R dot E E slash Goldie's Guide. Uh, go pre order that now. We got all the great stuff over at macroimmerge.com, including the pin of the month, which benefits the National Black Women's Justice Institute. We've got the 20 rendezvous pins over there. You can get two pins or one or whatever you want. Go check them out. That's designed three, maybe. Whatever you want. It's designed by Lucas Hespenhide. Uh, go check those out. And we've got the I'm Not Ashamed of My Clown Husband sticker, which is designed by Jacob Bailey and benefits the Huntington Children's Museum. Woo, woo. Also, I'm, I'm on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Travis McRoy. Hey, yes. thank you to Montaigne for the use of our theme song, My Life is Better With You. If you're in the mood for dope tracks, uh, yep. she just did a new single with David Byrne called Always Be You. Uh, Impossible. It, Impossible. It's, Nobody's that it's cool. It's possible. She is that cool. And uh, yeah, good. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Montaigne. Uh, and that's it. We don't have a final Yahoo ever, uh, ever again. But instead, let's just... Well, you do short prayer. Uh, the thing is, you're do like a new bit. Yeah, maybe. Oh, Griffin, maybe this try. Like, maybe this is like your final point sign off to like a college graduation. Like, this is your like you know, don't forget to wear sunscreen or something like that. You like, do what's know your? That I am doing that in a couple. Well, of oh, days. then this is great practice. We haven't talked. To, listen, Griffin, we don't have time to get into that because it will be a, th- a a thorough conversation. Okay, when we do uh, address that topic. Okay. Um, well, then I will say that go well, go out there and just fucking go ahead and go just go out. Sorry, it's go out there. Go ahead. Tonight, that sounds like you're holding the door open for the graduating class tonight. Tonight makes make the most of it. Go and go out there. Go out, out there. there. Go ahead. Meet you at Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been My Brother, My Brother, Me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.